Hello friends, uh, so in my last session I had uh, showed how to configure the database uh, mail services notifications and alerts so uh, further to this I uh, what I want to show in this session video session is I want to perform uh, I want to sh showcase a standard ETL job that runs I mean uh, in businesses it's uh, mostly what happens is in my career what I have faced is like mainframe uh, dumps uh, transaction records in a shared path from where uh, our SQL server SSIS picks up the and processes those file I mean it extracts uh, transforms and then loads the data into C into our SQL server that is its uh, mainframes and or SAP does uh, I mean drop the file so uh, it's something like this I've created a POC uh, kind of a thing say uh, I have created a folder called jobs you will find uh, a folder job which has uh, four folders again uh, first there is a file drop which we can consider as the file drop for uh, from where your uh, external uh, system like SAP or uh, your mainframes will drop the files uh, so and then there is a file process uh, folder and then there is a file archive so the idea is uh, very simple the idea is uh, an external system process uh, processes the drops the file in a path and then our system that is a SSIS picks up the file from there processes it uh, processes it while processing it picks up the file so say uh, a sales zip file is dropped in our file drop folder this for uh, this uh, zip contains two uh, files which is uh, sales once and say sale one and sales two they contain the sales data uh, so which needs to be recorded I and mean loaded in our staging DB so this is the sales table which is currently empty it has a transaction ID product code price and date transaction so uh, this data is uh, to be loaded in this table of my mm, my DB database and uh, the idea is to create an SSIS package which will uh, load the data extract it from the dump file drop load the data into my SQL server so what I have done here is the process is simple uh, sales dot zip file will be dropped in my file drop I'll extract the files from the zip and put it in the file process folder all the files in the zip and then process them once the file is processed it will I will again zip the file and put it in the file archive so file archive will have the same data processed sales with the date time stamp it is it is having the date time stamp uh, till the efficiency of seconds like year month date then hour minute and seconds so, uh, by which I can rect uh, identify when this file was picked up and run by my system this is again ha having the two sales rec records zipped back so this is the process it is it is kind of a POC which um, mostly 90% of SSIS jobs are uh, working on this model so based upon this I am going to uh, create I have created an SSIS package and uh, let's go in the details of this what I am I doing there is the pre-process uh, task then there is a process actual process task which is nothing but data load and then there is a post data load process and finally uh, job success send mail so and in the event handler I have created a, an, a send mail task which I mean uh, it's an DB send mail by SQL server I, as in the last video I had configured the database mail so I'll be using that to send an email if the if this package uh, fails so we'll look into the details of each and everything and further to this uh, I have also logged uh, in my e Windows event viewer so Windows event viewer is uh, logging the process of processing of the SSIS package on error if there is an uh, any error we can log into a Windows event viewer and drag the error so let's just walk through each uh, process what we are doing here so 
pre-processed task. In this task, we are actually get, uh, first and foremost we'll get the date timestamp. We'll calculate the date timestamp whenever this job runs. So, what I am doing is I have created a variable date time date stamp, and this variable uh, will get its value from this script. The script is uh, something like this. It gets the value. Uh, it calculates the value of year month date you can see here it gets the value of year month date hour minute and seconds and seconds and finally the complete uh, calculation is is being uh, assigned to the variable date stamp as you can see the complete calculation of the date is assigned to the date stamp that's all this a task is doing. Once this is done, the next task is to unzip the process file. This file, uh, uh, this task will unzip. This task will unzip the file, which is uh, dropped in uh, this uh, file drop. The expectation is that all the drop files will be uh, of sales dot zip or with the name sales uh, sales dot zip. I mean, we uh, assume that uh, we get one file every day and our job uh, say or in an hour or so whatever I mean it can it can be in any fashion so I expect the file to be dropped as sales.zip next I unzip these files and once this is unzipped I mean I'm sorry once it is unzipped I place the files extracted from here into my file process simple thing is if I run this execute task only this task I'll just uh, I'll just show what uh, this process task does this execute process task will extract the files in the sales.zip file and place it in yeah so uh, in, if you go and see you will have both the I mean you'll have the contents of the sales dot zip file in the file process so sales dot zip file contents are placed in your file process you'll have both the record um, files to be processed these files are flat files which are having data for the table sales so I'm deleting it so next once this is done it will uh, what uh, it will do is it will append uh, the date uh, calculated date timestamp and uh, to the file name the idea is to once this is done the idea is simple we will not leave the file uh, file drop i mean sales file with the sales dot zip name we will append the date something like this we will append the sales with the date timestamp and then rename the file so again this is the file system task which will actually go ahead and rename your file it will uh, rename the file with the date date time to your uh, in, in the file drop so the file drop name will be renamed next is the actual processing process task the process task I have the for each loop process which will loop across all the contents of the file process uh, folder if we have a look in the file uh, for each file loop process task it's actually looping across the contents of the process folder right so it is looping across the process folder file process folder and looking for all sales dot txt I mean sales with one two three four that is uh, sales one dot txt sales there could be n number of sales files it will loop across all those files and pass those into uh, the file path variable pass and then further to this we have a data flow task this data flow task is having again the file source which is using the connection flat file path and loading the data in your SQL server 
current database i mean your database uh, which i showed you, i mean here in your my database uh, on the sales table it will lo load the data from with the help of this data flow task so yeah, as you can see this uh, will take the files and then load it that's all this task will do so i have this file con uh, flat file connection for uh, for my flat file source and the load data con load data connection which is nothing but the oledb destination for uh, my sql server where uh, the data will be loaded from the flat file next uh, this is the processing i have not done any transformation we uh, further to in standard jobs there are some transformation which also happens uh, uh, during the data load so uh, that is um, about the process task next we move on to post data load process once the data has been loaded again the zip uh, file process this is for zipping the files again the process files whichever files got processed will be zipped back from my process folder the files will be zipped whatever files are there will be zipped back and with the date time stamp they will be renamed whatever date time time stamp we have they will be renamed and uh, first it will be zipped and then placed into i mean this will be zipped and placed into my archive folder once the job is complete if you go into the archive folder the zip file will be with processed sales and date time stamp dot zip it will be placed there once that is done it will rename append the date to it and rename the process file i mean it will first be zipped and dropped in zip process file and then it will be date time will be appended and then renamed once this is done it will clean up your drop folder whatever data is there in your file drop sorry in your file process will be cleaned up it will be completely deleted and after that the successful send mail job will be triggered so what is this is nothing but your job completion mail in my last video i had configured the admin profile so i am simply triggering it to send an email of the completion so admin profile will uh, send an email currently i am just sending it to my hotmail and uh, about the completion of the job that's all this this will be the last additionally as i said i have also created an event handler if there is any issue on error uh, if there is any issue in the package on error this will be triggered if there is this this will again trigger saying that your job failed the load package has failed and you need to look into the windows event viewer for any errors so that's all this will do and uh, apart from this i have done the logging in the e windows event log so that's all so let's just have a look I mean, uh, run this job and thus have a look how this this works. So first, I will create file drop. I I have a sales file. So let's I have a sales file. So we are all set. Let's start processing this job. We should be getting a successful success mail or a failure mail if this job is uh, complete or failed in whatever. reason so let's just process this job okay so our uh, process is complete so how do we validate that so the first thing to be validated is we need to just go in there we will find a sales file with a name current uh, date time so i mean if you find 
with date modif modified you will find that there is with the date time stamp this file has already been there I mean it has been renamed with the date time stamp 24 18 12 35 so 18 12 35 that's fine the next is in file process you shouldn't be finding anything and in the file archive also you'll be finding the same date time stamp as you can see 24 18 12 35 so that's next is the sql server data uh, check so we have data loaded from our ssis package i mean from the flat file through the ssis package once that is with the third thing is the mail we should be getting a mail right we have got a mail in our hotmail in my box wherever we had sent it so the job completed successfully load data jobs completed successfully we got a mail and it was sent from my configured right this was the mail uh, database uh, i mean this was the mail i had configured to be sent from right so we are there the next thing is i want to show in case of failure in case my job fails how does this go right so i do not place any file at all so what i do is to trigger a failure in my file drop i do not place any file with the name sales.zip so uh, naturally my job should fail right so let's have a look i'm simply running this job i'm not doing anything i'm simply running this job as you can see the job has failed and if i go in the event handler window it's uh, the date uh, on error send mail is successful so let's have a look i should be getting an email saying the job field right i got another email saying please be advised to look in the windows event viewer for errors so and the package failed so let me check in win, win, uh, windows event viewer i had logged my data i mean error in there so so i open my windows event viewer I should be getting the error details in here because my SSS package failed and I had logged my data. I mean, uh, error in my Windows event log. So let's check for SQL IS package hundred. right so if you can see the unzip because there was no file it was not able to unzip anything so there was error in uh, in the unzip task so as you can see there was error in the unzip task so we are in sync i mean uh, as per the error is concerned and also with the time and the date uh, i mean details so we have got the error message in our windows event right so we are good with this so that was um, i was trying to show it's a standard eta etl process i mean mostly uh, what i uh, we find most of the jobs in ssis and and i mean 99 90% of the time do this uh, of extraction transformation and loading during the data flow task there are additional for uh, data flow task we have additional uh, transformations that happen but this is the essence how we do this i mean the sta uh, standard that we follow for uh, loading the data additionally we have configurations which uh, i have skipped in this part we uh, i'll discuss that in my later uh, video sessions how we can configure that a 
for configuration we can go with four options we can either uh, configure it in a SQL server uh, table call SSIS configuration which can hold the uh, configurations for my variables and other uh, I mean your connection strings for your uh, destination and source and uh, the second thing is you can have an environment variable of a system do that and then you have a DTS config I mean XML file which does that the, this is the third option and the fourth being a registry entry in your uh, systems registry so we, we, we will look into it how uh, further we can uh, make your configurations dynamic but uh, as far as the standard ETL job is concerned this is this is pretty much it and uh, uh, that's how we basically archive process and drop files so thanks friends i hope uh, this job uh, this uh, article adds a little value to um, and, and gives you a little insight on the stand uh, standard that industry follows for as far as the etl is concerned thank you